I'm so happy to be here. I, I had such a productive day today, actually. I washed my sheets today. Um, thank you, yeah. For the first time in four dudes, so. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been a hell of a week. <laughs> so I'm single, obviously, but I'm newly single. I just got dumped in March of 2014, so. But that sounds like way sexier than being like, I'm so lonely, I ride the CTA for fun, you know? And I think that part of the reason why is because I, I drink a lot. I love drinking. Are you guys drinking, even though it's Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, you have uh, the free tickets or whatever. Lucky bitches. Yeah, um, I love drinking. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. I have like a drinking problem or issue or whatever. Um, I just found out about it. <laughs> I don't call it that. The doorman in my apartment building calls it that. Every time he sees me, which is fair, because his shift starts at noon, you know. And then he's all like, stop calling me your doorman. I'm your father. Move out already. <laughs> he's a silly guy. <laughs> but I was, uh, I was recently sober for two weeks, which, which, which doesn't sound like a lot, because it's not. But um, it was like embarrassingly, you guys, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I stepped on the scale after those two weeks, realized I'd lost seven pounds. That's how much I've been drinking. That's disgusting, and it's not a plot or these guys are all right on it with that. <laughs> shut up, shut up, it's too late. Um, but I was, I was still proud of myself, really. I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, okay, yes, bitch. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> you, you deserve a treat. <laughs> and I immediately blacked out that night, right? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard being sober in Chicago, especially because, like, I can't just go out and have, like, one drink. Like, 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 I think that there's only one good time of the night to stop drinking in Chicago. You guys, if you're, if you're drinkers, you know it. It's a point of night where almost all the bars are closed, so it's, like, four or five, six, seven in the morning. And um, you're walking down the street, and you see the one bar with its lights still on. I call it the promised land. And you, you go through its doors and you go up to the guy at the counter and you, you say, it's, it's been a long Monday. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I'm just gonna have two, two shots of Jameson. And after that, you can just close, you can just close my tab after that. <laughs> right, and then he says back to you, ma'am, this is a CVS pharmacy. <laughs> so you say, okay, just the Oxycontin. <laughs> But my last relationship ended because I, I was drinking too much, and that sucked, but a good friend of mine said that the best way to get over an ex-boyfriend, this is what you do, ladies, you join a boxing gym, okay? And every day that you're there, you just picture his stupid, ugly fucking face. I don't know why I'm looking right at you, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> usually there is an ugly dude sitting in the front row, but you're rich. Are you guys together? Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking waste my time. Um, <laughs> but good for you, that's... I'm happy for you guys. Um, <laughs> no, okay, so you're at the boxing gym, right? And you picture your ex-boyfriend's stupid, ugly fucking face right in the punchy bag. My friend was like, it's great, you're gonna burn a lot of calories, right? I'm like, whatever, I'll try it. First day of class, I think I'm doing very well. I'm sweating, I'm having a good time. And the trainer of the gym comes up to me and he's like, ma'am, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. You know, yeah, and I was confused. I was like, what are you, what? What are you talking about? And he said, you keep sobbing and making out with your punching bag. <laughs> so I, I box at home now. Uh, 
with my body pillow. His name's Gary. Um, and I tried all those you know, online dating, Tinder, those apps and stuff, and that stuff never really like worked for me. So lately, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to find guys using Uber because... <laughs> That way, you already know they have a car and a job. <laughs> but I don't recommend it if you're a drinker like me, because one time I like walked out in the middle of the street at 3 a.m. and just hopped in a hot guy's back seat, and he was like, I'm not an Uber, and I was like, let it happen, Shh. So don't do that. <laughs> not drinking tonight. Maybe that's why I should be drinking, too. So you guys are all drinking, right? We have designated drivers picked out and stuff? People just laughed. <laughs> Is there a designated driver here? <laughs> Fuck it, we'll take our chances. <laughs> it's a big town, LA. There's not a lot of cops. That's what people who come here, my friend are always amazed, like, you can just do anything you want in LA, right? Because there's so many people. I'm like, no, there's cops here and they're dicks. I got pulled over leaving this club. This is a true story. I got pulled over leaving. It was right before Memorial Day. So what was that? May. So May, I'm leaving the club, and uh, I get pulled over by a cop, and the cop comes up to me. First, cop, uh, first question a cop always asks you is what? Have you, been Have you been drinking? So me, being white guy, honest guy, stupid guy, instead of lying, I go, I go uh, actually, yeah, I had three beers down at the Laugh Factory. And the cop goes, oh, are you a comedian? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I am. He's like, oh, really? This is what he says to me. Really? Are you on coke tonight? You doing blow? I go, I go, is that a stereotype that everyone thinks all his comics are like, do a guy? I go, I don't know, have you had fucking donuts, you fat pig? You know, right? you do stereotypes? So I'm face down on the hood of the car, handcuffed. You know. Said I was a comedian, thought you'd think it was funny, you know. So they uncuff me. He gives me a ticket. This is where I get pissed. Here's, here's what he writes me up for an aggressive start. That was the fine, aggressive start. He said that I took off too fast at this light right here at Crescent Heights, heading that way on Sunset. Said it was too fast. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Gives me this ticket for $200. I had to send my money. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this. Would you not fight this? Send the 200 bucks in, get a court date. I go down to fight it. Guess what? Cop didn't even show up. They had to throw the ticket out and send me my $200 back. Thank you very much. Yes, I always fight your tickets. So I took the money, went out and bought an eight ball and it was amazing. It's all over there. I was like, free coke, yes, calm down, we're free coke. So, I live in L.A. now. I said to myself, Jerry, because Jerry's my name. <laughs> yeah. any, any alcoholics here tonight? Yeah, yeah I like alcohol. Yeah. yeah, fuck yes, of course. <laughs> I, got, I got busted for drugs once, yeah. I got involved with the wrong people. I didn't realize they were the wrong people until they showed me the police badge. <laughs> <laughs> But I got arrested for drunk driving. Yeah, the officer told me, the officer said, get out and walk. I couldn't walk. He said, do you realize you can't walk? I said, I know, that's what I'm driving, fuckhead. <laughs> so I said, I said, officer, I'll tell you something. We break the laws, this is why you have a job. <laughs> so I'm one of your employers. <laughs> So you're fucking fired. <laughs> um, yeah. Now I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you, something you're not gonna see coming. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whoa, fuck, where'd that come from? It's true, it's a fact. And I recently got sober. <laughs> I'm giving it all to you tonight. I'm giving it all to you. I did, I recently got sober, and getting sober really has you reflect on your life, like what you used to be like versus what you're like now. You know, like I used to get really excited about two for one happy hour, you know? And now I get excited about a free pen. <laughs> I do, I do. Cause those therapists, they got that good ink, you know? They got that fancy grip. Um, I used to, uh, I used to pee the bed. Yeah, I used to pee next to the bed. One time I got so drunk, I sat on a wine rack and I peed in my kitchen. And now, I pee in the toilet. Yeah, I know, like an adult. It's inconvenient, but I do it. 
And once you open the floodgates and tell everybody that you're sober, they like to ask you all these questions. Like, but you're a bartender, how does that work? You're a bartender. I'm like, imagine realizing I'm sober and now I have a fucking superpower? Mind control, motherfuckers. <laughs> Jesus. Then they ask, do you miss it? Do you miss it? Are you fucking kidding me? Every goddamn day. <laughs> miss it. The other day I got lightheaded from a cold brew and I was like, can I just have this just for a minute? Everybody's trying to feed me water. No, 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 I'm good. I just want to walk this one around a little bit. Feel her out. Haven't felt her in a minute. It's been a couple months. It's the old me. And the last one's like, are you sure? Are you sure you're an alcoholic? Now this one sticks with you because you're like, are you an alcoholic? After all that shit I just told you. Are you sure? Are you sure you're an alcoholic? And then it's like, the universe comes down in the form of a Facebook status update from eight years ago. And it says, left my phone at the bar again. If you need me, I'll be at the bar again. And you're like, cool, cool, we'll just double check it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually a recovering alcoholic. So if you guys could just put your drinks underneath your table for the duration of my set, that would help me out a lot. I quit drinking a year and a half ago. I knew that I had a problem with alcohol. I did not have a rock bottom that was very dramatic. I did not get a DUI or anything like that. What happened is one night I got drunk and I threw a table at my husband. <laughs> and I'm not proud of this. The next day he sat me down and he was like, Jeannie, we need to talk. I said, you need to stop working out. He said, that table was heavy. <laughs> so that shit was oak, that wasn't Ikea, you know? <laughs> People have different rock bottoms. You have different ideas of when you have a problem. What I did is I went online and I took an online test to see if I was an alcoholic. Do you know that there's an online test you can take? But Laugh Factory, let me tell you something. If you have to take an online test to see if you're an alcoholic, well then, you should probably pour yourself a drink first. I got three questions into this online test and then I was like, I'm gonna shut this laptop and finish this tomorrow if I'm not too hungover. First question said, have you ever gotten defensive about your drinking? And I thought about it, I was honest with myself. Two years ago, my kids came home from their dad's house and my son said, Mommy, why do you have two bottles of empty wine next to your bed? And I said, I don't know, why aren't you reading at grade level? <laughs> Little bit defensive. <laughs> Second question said, have you ever changed your drink of choice or brand of drink because you have a problem in particular stopping that drink? And here's the thing, I love beer. You don't get a body like this from not loving beer. <laughs> but I would do after a night of drinking, like when I knew I had to start heading home, I would switch from beer to Jameson. <laughs> Shots, no, not yeah, come on, that's like a, a terrible idea, sir. That's like breaking up with Chris Brown to date the NFL, that is, <laughs> or the MLB, either one, really. Third question said, have you ever blacked out as a result of drinking? Now here's the thing, I've never blacked out, but I have sat on the toilet and reached over my shoulder for the seat belts, just. <laughs> Smells like an Uber pool in here. I guess. This is what I didn't do for my birthday. Everybody, did you get drunk? I didn't get drunk for my birthday. I've only been drunk twice in my entire life. Twice. Got drunk for the first time when I was 30. Everybody like, how did you make it to 30 and never drink? It's quite simple. I have a very vivid imagination. And what happens is before I do anything, I play it out in my head. I'm very over analytical. <laughs> and if I don't like how it ends up here, I won't do the shit in real life. So anytime somebody would offer me a drink, I'd be like, no, I'm cool. And they were like, why? I said, because I, I'm, scared, you know, I'm scared I'll get drunk and end up sleeping with somebody that I don't want to sleep with. But for some reason, I would never make it a person that I would end up sleeping with. I always made it a horse. Now, 
I can't explain the horse part. I just knew there was enough for me to not want to drink. Because anytime somebody will offer me a drink, they say, no, you want to drink? I'm like, no, I'm cool. Like, Why? I say, because I'm going to get drunk and end up sleeping with a horse. And this is what, <laughs> and this is how I played out of my head. Someone offered me a drink. I don't know how to stop. I keep drinking, I keep drinking. I get drunk and I pass out and I wake up in some random hotel at like five o'clock in the morning and the police kick my door open and they like freeze. Did you have sex with that horse right there? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> There were a lot of horses here last night. <laughs> and I'm like, how did y'all even find me? And they like, we saw the video on YouTube. I'm like, who recorded me having sex with a horse? And how many views does it have? <laughs> and they're like, that's not our business. Get your clothes on because you're going to jail. And just my luck, the horse is underage. So <laughs> now it's statutory bestiality. And I go stand before a judge, and the judge is like, we don't even know what to charge you with. Just go to jail until we figure this shit out. <laughs> now I'm in jail with killers, gangsters, and drug dealers, and my cousin, and everybody. <laughs> and they all ask me the same thing. What the fuck are you in here for? And I gotta try to make my crime sound tough. So I'm like, yeah. I slept with an underage horse. <laughs> what, bitch? And they immediately demoted by saying, oh, this dude fucked a pony. And I'm like, no. It wasn't a pony, that sound bad. It was a full grown horse. She had a mane and wore horseshoes and had a saddle and race on the weekends. Now my nickname in jail is the Milo the Pony Fucker. And that ain't gangster. So to keep people from raping me, I tell them I got hoof and mouth disease. So when I get out of jail, all my friends are like, yo, let's go to the racetrack. And I'm like, dude, I can't. Uh, part of my probation is I got to be within 100 feet of a horse. So I can't go to no racetrack. I can't ride a merry-go-round. I can't even drive a Mustang. Like my whole life is fucked up. And I know a lot of y'all are saying to yourself, he really took that too far, but you'll never see me on Mari having an argument with another horse about whether or not that's my fucking centaur over there in the goddamn corner. <laughs>